All right, good morning, everyone. Good to be with you this morning on this Thursday morning. Uh, looking forward and excited to uh, bringing the devotions to you today. I want to thank you for your prayers for last night. Um, I know I put up <clears throat> late yesterday afternoon that I was preaching at New Life Baptist Church last night. So thank you so much for your prayers. It was a blessing. Carol, good morning. Um, the brethren were helped and uh, so was the pastor who wasn't there. He watched later, Brother Kevin. So, you know, anytime I, I, you know, you can help the brethren or help the pastor, it's a real blessing. So appreciate your prayers. And so anything that the Lord does is also attributed to your prayers. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you've been having a good week and I uh, hope you're looking forward to the weekend to come. Belinda, Sister Belinda, Sister Marquez, good morning, good to see you. Hope all are doing well over there. Looking forward to being with you in January, end of January. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, uh, let's take our bite. If you're following along in the scriptures, uh, if you're not, just have a listen. We're in Luke chapter 1. This morning, would like to talk to you this morning, I, I guess, about a favorite couple of mine in, in this whole Christmas account uh, I, I do appreciate this couple in a, in a number of different ways, and, and I guess I want to share one of those ways this morning. I want to talk to you about Zacharias and Elizabeth this morning, and, and, and I just, I, I really do. And anyway, I'll share with you why I really do appreciate them. Tracy, good morning. Let's have a look at verse number five, Luke chapter one, verse number five. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Now, I'm going to stop this. Lucy, good morning. Uh, I tell you what I, I, I really appreciate about this cover. Here you've got Zacharias and Elizabeth. They're now well stricken in years and they've had no children. And you've got to stop and think about the ramifications of that in the lives of couples in the Bible concerning being barren. Uh, all through the Old Testament, we, we read about certain ones, famous ones, we would say, uh, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah couldn't have children. Uh, Rachel, remember, Rachel couldn't have children until God opened her womb. Uh, Hannah, Elkanah and Hannah, uh, she couldn't have children. And then here we've got Elizabeth. Uh, so, you know, when you think about these ladies that, that, or these families, these couples that couldn't have children, it was, it was a big deal. It really was a big deal. We... You know, today, you know, for, for most couples today, if, if they can't have children, then there's other means that they can go down uh, to try and have children. They didn't have that back in this day. But more than that, more than that, for, for Zacharias not, not to be a father was a big deal. Uh, there would have been perhaps a lot of pressure placed upon him to take perhaps another wife. We don't read in the Gospels of multiple wives. I'm not saying that there wasn't. Remember in the Old Testament, we saw different ones having multiple wives, Solomon, obviously, David, and so on. Uh, you know, Abraham took Hagar and, you know, Elkanah had uh, Penina and, uh, you know, so, you know, and, and of course, um, Jacob had Leah and Rachel. Uh, you know, so there may have been pressure placed upon him to, okay, keep Elizabeth, but take another concubine or another another bride under himself so that he could have children because you know Zacharias the man wanted wanted his name to his legacy to keep going for not for for Zacharias not to have children would have put him lower down perhaps the status pole all right now they wouldn't have said that but it wouldn't have been looked upon you know it it just it just wasn't good for Zacharias. But more than that, it wasn't good for Elizabeth. To not have children in the case of the lady was a big, big issue. Big issue. Because having children was a blessing of the Lord, the fruit of the womb. And, and of course, we know back in the Old Testament, families had, uh, you know, couples had lots of children because of the coming Messiah. They wanted to have, they wanted to be the one to bring out the Messiah and so on and so forth. And, 
perhaps in, in Elizabeth, Elizabeth's case, you know, there would have been perhaps ladies whispering about her behind her back, you know, hushed tones and yeah, Brad Elizabeth, she's, she's been trying to have kids for ages and she can't have children uh, and, and said in such a way that Elizabeth knew that they might have been talking about it, but just didn't quite pick up what they were saying and, and, and just the shame that Elizabeth would have had. As a matter of fact, she was a reproach. If you look at verse number 25, Elizabeth said this, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the day wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach from among men. So obviously she was reproached or disgraced. She was, she was classed as disgraceful because she couldn't have children. Big issue, right? But what impresses me most about this couple is that they remained faithful. They remained faithful. If you notice their testimony, look at verse 6 again. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. They had no children, but now they were well stricken in years. I don't know whether they were praying for children right up until this date. Or perhaps they were praying for children in their younger years and then she got to the point where, where she, her, her body, she knew that her body couldn't produce kids anymore. She was past childbearing age, so they ceased, looked hopeless, it was no good. Yet despite all of that, they remained faithful to the Lord. They remained faithful to him as far as, you know, they were both righteous and, 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 and they walked uh, according to the commandments of the Lord. And one of the things today in modern Christendom is that when things don't go so well, the first thing that stops in the life of an individual or even a couple is our faithful service to the Lord. We get so caught up in, in what we don't have. Oh God, we've been praying for a child for ages and, and why haven't you blessed us with children? And, and, and look what you did for Sarah in Abraham's day, which they would have known about. Look what you did for Rachel in her day, which they would have known about because that's where the patriarchs come from. And look what you did for Hannah and bringing forth Samuel. They may have gone down the list and reminded God of all his miraculous ways that he, that he had done in their lives. And, and uh, you know, and, and oh God, you haven't. And they could have just said, Rafi, well, forget it. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, that happens in Christianity today. The other thing that they kept doing, which really impresses me as well, is they kept worshipping. Notice what his job was, verse 8, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office. Verse 9, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense. To burn incense. Now, you know, often we think about burning incense. You've got that stick, you light it up, and the, the, the incense, the smell goes up and all of that. It's, it's a very common thing. We'll look at some scripture in a minute. Incense or burning incense is associated with worship. So the thought this morning is worshipping despite. They continued worshipping. They continued being faithful in their service to the Lord. He continued executing his office. This is, this is my job. I'm going to keep doing it despite the fact that we're not blessed with children, despite the fact we're not blessed. And, you, and listen, put, put whatever in there, whether it's children or we just didn't get this and we haven't got that. And, and, you know, God hasn't blessed us with whatever. But, you know, despite that, Lord, I want to be faithful in executing my office. You've, you've given me a wonderful privilege in serving you. And, and, and I want to keep worshipping you. And they worship despite. And I like that about Elizabeth and Zacharias. That now they were well, they were well stricken in years. They continued all down through their life, despite the agony of not having children, despite the reproach that Elizabeth was was experiencing, despite the the, the status not being there for Zacharias, and and perhaps he feeling a lesser man, right? A less can't have children. I'm a, I feel a lesser man. He's seeing all of his mates out there with, 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 with their wives and kids and a past lover walking down the road and there goes Joe and there goes Sam and there goes Bill and, and all, look at all their kids. And, and he feels a lesser man because he can't have, well, she's reproached because she can't have children. Yet despite that, they were faithful in worshipping their creator God. I love that about Zacharias and Elizabeth, don't you? What an example they are to each and every one of us in regards to this. They were burning incense despite the fact they were worshipping despite. Go with me to the book of Exodus, if you would, if you're following Exodus chapter 30. 
And uh, we'll just look at a couple of scripture dealing with this. This is, a, this is an interesting verse because, again, dealing with, with when we deal with worship, Exodus chapter 30, look at verse number 8 and 9. It says this, And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even... Now, don't forget, you know, you look at all these typologies, the, the, the light, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the burning of the incense which is associated with prayer and worship. You've got the light, you've got the bread, which, which pictures the word of God. Light is the light of the revelation. You've got the light and the bread, revelation of the word and all this sort of thing. And the light being Christ, the light being the Holy Spirit and all of that. So you've got Aaron now, lighteth the lamps at even and, he, and shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generation, perpetual. You know, this is something that, that God wanted in the life of, of, of the Hebrews perpetually right and and Zacharias is fulfilling that and like for us now he, you know God expects perpetual worship he, he's worthy to be worshipped right look at verse 9 you shall offer no strange incense thereon now remember when um uh, uh was it Abi, Abinadab and Abihu was it Abinadab and Abihu that offered strange fire I think it was them and uh, or was it Phineas and Hophni and Phineas? <laughs> One of those ones. When they when the strange fire was offered, offered, which wasn't the right one, they were they were dealt with right harshly. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering. Neither shall your neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. Right. So no strange incense. So we think here about okay in in type. Now we talk about you know worship. There is a, there is a, Jesus said that the Father is looking for true worshippers. So obviously there's true worship and there's false worship, okay? So even back in, in Exodus, in Aaron's day, God says, no strange incense. Don't light any strangers. I don't want any kind of false worship. And brethren, let me just say something this morning. God is still the same today where he doesn't want any false worship. Now, to describe what that is, I'm not going to sit here and describe what it is for you. You come to your own conclusion. But obviously, out in Christendom today, in modern Christianity, you've either got true worshippers, false worshippers. And I'm not talking about the instruments that are being used. You know, there's obviously true and false worship out there, and God doesn't want that today. He wants, he's looking for true worshippers. That's what Jesus said, okay? Let's go to the other end of the book. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8 for a minute. Let me just read this here. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden incense, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which come with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So again, now... Exodus has got the same. You scoot all the way forward to Revelation, that picture in heaven now, because remember the tabernacle and the temple, there's, there's one in heaven and, and the blood sprinkled and all of that, right? So now you've got this angel offering incense in the heavenly altar there and, and the prayers of the saints with him. So there's, there's something likened to, to this worship now, this offering of the incense and even with prayers. So when you think about back in Luke chapter 1, what is happening, I, I love the fact because it's a challenge to me. And all of us ought to be challenged with this very thought that, that despite when things don't go your way, despite when, when prayers seemingly go unanswered, despite the fact that, that, man, why is this not happening for me? And why is it happening for them? And all this, despite all of that, that was going on in Zacharias and Elizabeth's life, and maybe even in your life, they worshipped despite that. They, they continued faithfully despite that. They served God faithfully despite. And I love that about that. And it should be a challenge to all of us when we face things in our life that, that we don't necessarily like and it's, and it's an, a, a, an offense to us. Don't, don't abandon God. God never abandons us. Bible says he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And yet one of the first things that we do as his children, when things don't go our way, we just walk away. We just walk away. So therefore we only worship God when things are going well. 
You know, we only serve God when things and all the boxes and all the all the stars are in alignment and all that. Yep, yep. Okay, I can I can still be faithful, God. Everything's still in line. I can I can still worship you, God. Everything's going well. It's fantastic. I can still do it. Oh no, no, things are not going well. That's it. I'm walking away from worshiping you. I'm walking away from serving you, man. People are saying stuff about me, and that's not. Hey, Zacharias and Elizabeth could have said that. Those women, Zacharias, they're saying stuff about me. I can't have children, and I'm a disgrace in the sight of. Me. Man, why do we bother going down to the temple anymore? Why do we bother going to church anymore when all these people are saying stuff about us and, and they're bringing a reproach to me and all this sort of stuff? <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Let's not just read this and, 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 and just, oh, wow, happy days. You know what I mean? No, look deeper into what's going on here. Look deeper into what is taking place in the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth. Let's have a look now. Now, normally I'd like to bring a devotion like this on a Friday, but anyway, it's Thursday. Let's have a look now at what was associated with the worship that Zacharias was bringing. We've already seen in Ezekiel as well, uh, in, in Exodus as well as Revelation, the burning of the incense and something associated with that. When we think about worship, what was going on? Well, let's have a look at verse number uh, verse number ten, Luke chapter one ten. And while he's burning incense, verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Okay, so when you think of part of worship, worship, can I just remind us again, and I, I know you've probably heard this a, a gazillion times, worship isn't just about music and song, right? It's not just about singing. Worship, worship is, is, is bringing, is prayer. If, if in our church services, there's, there's not a, um, a, a good amount of prayer and, and your pastor, if you're a pastor, you need to discern what that is. And, you know, every, I know every church is different, but folks, let me tell you, part of worship, whether it's in the, te- in, in the church, in the temple, in the tabernacle or in your house, Part of your worship of your God, my God, the God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, part of worship includes prayer, okay, along with that. So uh, Zacharias is offering up the incense and everyone's outside praying. Why? Well, when you look at burning of the incense all through the scriptures, right up in Revelation, there was prayer and the burning of incense likened together. And up it went before God. You know what I mean? The prayers are going up. Your prayers, listen to me very carefully. Your prayers are always going up before God. Your prayers are always being heard. And your prayers will be answered. Okay? Otherwise, let's do away with the Bible. Because sometimes, oh, my prayer, just, I just don't, the, the ceiling, the, the heavens seem like brass and I just don't seem to be getting through and all this sort of stuff. And maybe that's right. Sometimes our prayer life is very difficult. Alan, good evening. But that doesn't mean stop. Well, I prayed that I, we could have kids. I prayed that we could have kids and, and, and God just didn't answer us. And therefore, I, that's it. I've, I've had enough. I'm just, I might offer a prayer here and there. You know what I mean? Oh, I might pray for Joe down the road or I might pray for sister such and such down the road, you know. But when you think about worship in the church of God, there ought to be prayer. There ought to be a lot of prayer. Jesus himself said, did he not, that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? And yet I feel, and I don't know about you, and, 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 and I could be wrong, your, your church may have copious amounts of prayer, but I just feel gen, generally speaking, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of prayer going on in the house of God. Now, in our, in our church at Open Door, we have a prayer meeting before church and um, you know, uh, sometimes Brother Michael might pray later on, and then we pray. You know what I mean? So we, we, you know, we try and because if you don't bathe everything in prayer, especially when it comes to meeting on a Sunday, then why bother? Why bother meeting? Every prayer should precede everything that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you think about this offering up of the incident, this worship that Zacharias is doing, they're outside praying. Think about the importance of his job. Now, you might think what I do for the Lord in my church or what I do for the Lord out here just doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Listen, you don't know who's relying on you to keep doing your service. While he's offering up the incense, there are others out there praying. If he wasn't there, it, let's say he, it, you know, it, obviously it was his time. And I don't know, they must have taken shifts. Right? This is your time Zacharias, this is what you are to do. It could have been for a few days, could have been a week. This is your job for the week. Imagine if he never turned up for work. Oh, I just can't be bothered today. You know what I mean? It's like I'm sick and tired of 
I'm sick and tired of my wife being reproached. I'm just sick and tired of, of not having any children. My, you know, my, I have no lineage now. It's like it's done. And I just can't be bothered showing up for work anymore. I can't be bothered going to burn that incense. I've had a gutful. People were relying upon him because they wanted to pray at the time of worship. Think about that. People are relying upon you. The Lord's relying upon you to keep being faithful in service to him. And others around you are relying on you and you keeping being faithful in serving the Lord because they're blessed. They're helped by what you do for him. Despite what you think, whether it's big or small, let's get this out of our head. Oh, this is a big job. This is a little job. Any job for Jesus is a great job. Amen. Any job for Jesus. Secondly, there was a message from God. Okay, the angel of the Lord appeared. Look at verse 11. There appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. I mean, what a, <laughs> you know, God through his angels shows up. Who of us doesn't want God to show up when we worship corporately together? I want God to show up. Honestly, I want God to be there. I want, I, I want his blessing. I, want, I, I just want everything about him in our church service, and I'm sure you're the same. So God, through the angels, shows up, and I'm sure it would have, whoa, what's going on? It would have shocked Elizabeth. Like it would shock a lot of us if God really did show up on our service. Like, what in the world, God, you're here today? And uh, there appeared on in verse 12, And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, So here comes the message. So part of worship, you have prayer, Right, so you got prayer first, foremost, most important, and then you get the message. Folks, let me tell you, if you don't have the prayer, maybe you won't hear from God in the message. Pray. Before you go to church, pray. While you're at it, grab someone. You know, if you if you if you feel that we just haven't had enough, you grab a couple of people, say, let's have a little prayer meeting over in the corner here. Let's pray for our service and, and pray earnestly and pray fervently and pray for God. And I need to hear from you, God. We need to hear from you, God. This church needs to hear from you, God. And so his worship, there's prayer, and now there's a message from God. And God speaks. And I love the encouragement. You know, I, I really enjoy, I, I tell you, I, I'm a blessed person. I really am. And, and a lot of you, all you folks help me do this. And I appreciate that and, and the support that we get in, in the ministry to do it. And, and, and preachers, I would say, are very thankful for you and your church because you, you help them stay in the ministry to, to, to bring a message from God. And I really, you know, when you think about 1 Corinthians 14, you know, you, you, you've got the exhortation, you've got the, you, you've got the encouragement, you've got all of those that, that prophesying or preaching should bring. And we really do live in a day where, where the encouragement from God needs to be there. And you say, oh, but you, you, you're soft on sin and you need to be, bless God, you need to be preaching on sin. Balance, people, balance. Preachers, balance. You can't shear the sheep Every Sunday, you know what happens when literally in the real life, when you shear sheep every week, you will kill them. Right? So God's people are no different. You can't shear the sheep. And somehow we think it's a, it's a great badge of, oh, bless God, I got up there and I ripped their faces off and I, oh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Well, good on you. Good on you for killing some of God's sheep. You know what I mean? You know, back in the olden days, ah, oh, hellfire. And I, like I said the other day, I'm, I'm for hellfire brimstone preaching. But balance, balance, okay? Most of the, most preaching that needs to be, if you read it, you know, you reprove, you ex, uh, reprove, rebuke and exhort, yes. But then there's 1 Corinthians 14 where you, you, you exhort and you encourage and you comfort, right? So there's a balance. And here we get a great message from God, fear not. Fear not. Look at what the angels said. Look at what God says through the Fear not, for thy prayer is heard. Wow. What an encouragement that would have been for Zacharias. Fear not. Your, what prayer? Come on, Zacharias. That prayer that you prayed about a child. Oh, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> Maybe he stopped years ago about praying for that, right? Now, let's say he stopped praying for it. Let's say they stopped praying for a child years ago. God still remembers. God still remembers. But what about if they were praying right up until this day, despite the fact that Elizabeth was barren? Maybe they were using all those ladies in the Old Testament as an example. And they, uh, Elizabeth, let's just keep praying, Elizabeth. God can still do this. And she still wanted a kid in her old age. How many of you ladies want a child in your old age? Here they are, they want a kid in their old age. And God says, fear not, your prayer is heard. A message from God. But let me just share something with you. Look at verse number 20, because Zacharias had a bit of a hard time. 
And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Zacharias doubted. Someone once said this, don't undo in the darkness what God gave you in the light. Don't undo what God gave you in the darkness. Don't, un uh, don't undo in the darkness what God gave you in the light. The, de the, the darkness of doubt Right, the darkness of doubt. Don't doubt God's word. That's what he's saying. Don't my look what he says. Which shall be fulfilled in their season. Oh, I'm, I've been relying on a promise. I better check the time. Man alive, I've been going for a while. I've been relying on a promise. Hey, it'll be fulfilled in His time. Very quickly, one last thing that should be included in our church services. Would you look at verse number? Uh, where are we? Look at verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. There ought to be joy and gladness in the house of God. This is part of worship. <laughs> you, you offer the incense. You're worshiping. You've got prayer. You've got a message from God. There's joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Man, I tell you what, we need some joy and gladness in our services last night. I was sharing with the church that I was in last night, New Life Baptist. I was just saying, just before I got up to preach, one of the young kids, you know, he's, he's running up and down the aisle. He's got this biggest smile on his face, you know what I mean? He's just being a kid, you know, run up and down. And I thought, you know what? Here is this child. He's got no reservations. Oh, he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. He's just running up and down. And he's got this smile. And I thought, why don't we as adults do that? <laughs> I got up and I said that. Uh, anyway. Run, I'm not talking about running the aisles. Some churches in America run the aisles. I don't have a problem with that. Some people think it's Pentecostalism. <laughs> they got the joy of the Lord. You know what I mean? God help us to have some sort of joy and gladness in our church services. We don't all have to be like stuffed shirts, right? We don't have to be like that. Stand there like at attention, like oh, you're afraid to. Oh. Let me put my hands up. I hope no one sees me. There we go. That's high enough. Hey, raise those hands and praise God and give God the glory and have the joy and glad. Listen, prayer, the message. There was a great message from God. It was encouraging. It was a blessing. And now there's joy and gladness. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that Zacharias and Elizabeth didn't quit on God just because they had some things not go right in their life? Brethren, let me say, let's worship God despite Worship him despite. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. What an encouragement you are to us, and we thank you for that. Lead us and guide us today. May we bring you joy and gladness in our life, and as a result of that, we too will have joy and gladness. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brethren, sorry for going a bit longer than usual. Got caught up. <laughs> have a great day in the Lord. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless you. Goodbye for now.